Okay, so once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our online class um, for the subject Material Science and Engineering. So we will be discussing about the introduction to Material Science and Engineering, but before that, let's watch your video, or video responses to the question that I have posted via Flipgrid. And the question is, um, so why should we study Material Science and Engineering? So here are uh, your responses. Let's watch. Okay. Can you see um, this browser that I've shared? Okay, let's start. First one to share um, his uh, answer or response is plants. In field service depends on its properties. The material will often need to have its physical and mechanical properties. For example, the steel, it can be soft and it can be hard. Brittle ducts and something else. A material scientist will know how to heat the steel. So, sa madaling salita, kaya natin pinag-aaralan to. May mga kanya-kanyang bagay kung para saan gamitin to. Halimbawa, sa pagkaan ng engineering, Pinag-aaralan natin ito katulad na sa civil engineering, halimbawa. ba Hindi naman pwede tayo basta-basta lagay ng ano, na tayo lang tayo ng agad ng poste. Hindi natin malalaman kung ano yung saktong sukat nun. Kailangan pa natin isolve kung gaano karaming simento ilalagay, kung gaano karaming bakal ilalagay. So, ganun din po kagay sa pag-aaral ng science materials. Kaya baka siya naging importante. So, thank you po, sir. Okay, thank you, Lance. Next, Rona. Hi, sir. I'm Rana. And to answer the question, why is material science and engineering important? We know that engineers build and create. And for us future engineers, it is important to study material science and engineering for this course concerns with the properties of materials we are going to use on building something, which is very necessary in our field. We cannot just build and create and use materials we prefer. As future engineers, it is important to know which is the appropriate material to use that will meet the requirements of the society. And with that, we will be able to eliminate experiencing complications. Also, we can use the material in its most efficient way and for a long time usage. Lastly, it is important to study this course so that we will be able to appreciate how things are made and understand the concept and physics behind its creation. That's all, and I hope that after taking this course, I'll see things differently and appreciate them more than ever. Thank you, Pa. Thank you, Rana. Next, we have Vince Kim. Um, it is very important for us to know material science, of course. Kasi nga, syempre, we are engineers. We build things, create things, design things in the best way. Um, and siguro, para na rin siguro pag dumating na yung point na like a thesis na para alam natin kung paano i-design yung proyekto na gagawin natin in a best way, in an effective way. At syempre, dapat mabawasin yung cost na gagamitin para dun na hindi lang basta matibay. Ang pwede naman pala, mas mura yung materialis na ginagamit natin. And at the same time, matibay pa rin. Um, siguro para malaman din namin na hindi lang Basta gawa lang na gawa na hindi niniisip yung materials. Para siguro rin na pag dumating na rin sa point na engineers na and napunta sa isang design team na isang kumpanya para malaman mo, para matuto tayo mag-design in a best way na with minimal costing and effective na gamit yung gagawin natin. Yun lang. Thank you, Vince. Next, we Science have... Science and engineering is very important, especially for us future engineers, because we will be creating things that will make the lives of everyone easier and comfortable. Material science involves the study of relationship between material structure, composition, and properties, while engineering is the application of materials in order to create things. This is a necessary course to take in because we need to be familiarized with the different materials in our field. Because the more familiar the engineer is, 
the more proficient and confident he or she could do such innovative things in the future. Also, this could serve as a strong foundation, not just only in our field, but also knowing the different materials to be used in other fields as well. Now, we have also the saying that it is not just about creating something new, but creating or building with its own great quality. Because quality matters when it comes to materials. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Next, we have Anne Sharina. Thank you, Anne. Material science and engineering is all about enhancing the existing materials or to discover something. And we need to study material science and engineering because as the world progresses towards technological future, materials also need to evolve to support the needs of these new invented things. And for example, in electronics field, New gadgets like cell phones or laptops, computers now get smaller, lighter, and more powerful, but their durability or their build quality doesn't affect, affect as much. Now, with the help of material science and engineering, engineers could, re could reach the greatest potential of their inventions um, that could help uh, people with their daily lives. Okay, thank you, Oliver, John. Next is Jamie. Hello, everyone. I'm Antina Antare of ACAC Oran. The question is, why do we need to study material science and engineering? As the world becomes modernized, the technology keeps on advancing. Material science and engineering deals with inventing and innovating things to make everyday life easier and better. In order to meet the basic needs of the people, we need to have the basic knowledge and understanding of the appropriate materials to be used. It is also important to know where it is applicable to use to avoid failure. At the end of this course, I hope I will be able to apply all my learning. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Now we go to Cesare. Material science and engineering is analyzing, designing, processing, and testing materials to achieve a set of properties. This subject is important in our course because nowadays there is a higher demand in electronic components that needs to be lighter and smaller. We need material science and engineering to come up with new materials that meet the expectations and can handle such capacities. This subject is also important to our environment because various of pollutants in the production and fabrication of materials that we use every day can be reduced in studying this subject. We will study this subject because of its importance not only in our course, but also in its application in our everyday lives now and in the future. Okay, thank you, Sess. Next, we have Hesed Day. Answer the question, why is material science engineering important? First of all, as engineers, our goal is to innovate, create, and utilize materials which is applied in our chosen field. So, in order to do this, we must know what we are innovating, what do we need to create, 
and what materials must we utilize. That is why material science is important because this first subject links engineering and materials for specialized uses. With this knowledge, as future engineers and innovators, we will be able to fully explore and maximize the things around us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, we have Belinda. Good day, everyone. So, my answer to the question, why is material science and engineering important? As an electronics engineering student, it is crucial for us to study and learn material science and engineering since it deals with the actual application of scientific research and scientific theory also deals with the science behind how a certain material is made and formed. As future engineers, we're bound to innovate, design, create, invent things that is sustainable and reliable, things that is cost-effective and productive, things that could make a real difference and significance in our industry, like the invention and development of nanotechnology, biomaterials, smart materials, and so much more. Okay, thank you. Belinda, next we have um, Mikaela. Why is material science and engineering important, or why do we need to study this subject? As future engineers, this subject is very significant because it is our job to create, design, and develop very complex systems. We will only be able to do our job if we have a great foundation such as this subject. Material science and engineering is also important since we now live in a world that keeps on modernizing and we have to keep up with modern technologies. We have to figure out the right type of materials that needs to be used to be able to engineer a device, structure, or product. Okay, thank you, Michaela. Jasmine. Material science and engineering is important because it influences our lives each time we buy or use a new device, machine, and structure. Material science teaches what things are made of, and materials engineering shows how to apply knowledge to make better things and to make things better. The study of this is said to be the key to make things stronger, cheaper, lighter, and more functional and more sustainable. Okay, thank you, Jasmine. Now let's go to Revelyn. Hi, I am Revelyn Sisabal from ECE301. So the purpose of this video is to answer the question, why is material science and engineering important? At the beginning, I didn't even know what to answer to that question, but after I gathered some information, I realized that this is really important to us to learn. Um, MSE or Material Science Engineering helps us to discover new materials and to improve the old ones. It also gives us more insights and deeper understanding about processing, composition, and structure of a material. For example, is to know the effectiveness of using waste materials, cleaner material processes, and also in developing instrumentation to control and monitor pollution. Therefore, material science and engineering um, play a significant role in economy, in raising, um, in raising standard of living, minimizing demands for energy, and also to improve environmental quality. Okay, thank you, Brev. Next we have Joanne. Okay, sorry about that. Good day, everyone. I'm Joanne Zarina Ipelus from ECE 301. As an engineering student, it is really important to study material science and engineering. As we all know, building and designing is one of the engineers' work. In this subject, we can learn and expand our knowledge to the different types, structure, and properties of a material. 
And of course, for us to easily determine, analyze, and improve a material in building and designing a project. Thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you, Joanne. Next, we have Ellis. Based on my opinion, material science and engineering are very much important, not only for us to be familiarized with their identity, but also to be knowledgeable with their use and functions in our daily lives. They are very important, not only because these are the things that we're going to encounter in different engineering fields, but also because they play an important role in different applications of our daily lives, not to mention the innovation of those things. Many of the engineering and science materials are the stepping stone of evolving industrialization that gives a big impact to our societal transformation. That's my thought about why material science and engineering is important. Peace out. Thank you, Alice. Now we have Material science Maturate. and engineering enables the creation and application of materials in our society. In the past years, the designed and created materials have transformed our everyday living, the world's workplace, and even our global economy. This subject is very beneficial for us because in the future, we will be assigned to create or open it more sustainable, more functional, and cost-efficient new electronic products. This will also help us to be more familiar in non-electronic or electronic materials so that we will be able to know what is the most suitable and the best, best materials to use in our future projects. All the knowledge and ideas that we will learn will make us more confident to participate to the development of new and better, pro better electronic products that will be very beneficial in the future generations. Nakikita nyo, guys? Materials and designing, processing, testing, and discovering materials, mainly solids. It's about analyzing the structure, properties, performance, and processing of materials and objects. In fact, if you do a Google search for materials engineering right now, you'll see this come up. And this basically says that all four of these things are connected, and by changing one, like the structure of a material, you change everything else. But let's first start with careers. Like what would a materials engineer be doing or be needed for? Well, like I said in our aerospace video, aircrafts traveling at supersonic speeds are subject to so much friction from the air molecules that the aircraft can be heated to several hundred degrees Fahrenheit. The materials engineer might have to figure out or design the best material to use that can handle these conditions. Materials engineers are very important when it comes to cars. Did you know cars are designed to crumple when they are in a crash? They are made to have that accordion-like response and it saves lives. The cars crumple to absorb energy from the crash and they need the right material and structure to do this. If the car was extremely tough and no damage was done in a crash, all that energy would be transferred to the driver. The frame of the car may have harder metals at the top compared to the bottom because of how that will transfer energy from a crash away from a driver. How a car will be impacted in a crash is kind of predictable because that's how engineers design them. And a huge part of this is picking the right materials with the right properties. And on that topic, materials engineers deal a lot with fracture and how components fail. So you could work in a failure analysis lab where you have broken parts that can range from jet engines to computer parts and have to figure out what went wrong. And it's really about looking at the structure and material itself. The materials engineer who wrote this video with me had a job in a failure analysis lab where he had to look at the landing gear of a plane. But not shown here, the landing gear had a huge crack around it which almost broke it during landing. So he had to use a microscope and analyze the microstructure of the landing gear. This is a micrometer scale picture but tells us a lot. At this scale you can actually see where the crack originated from and how it physically propagated through the structure. The crack isn't shown here, but you'll learn how to analyze these in school. And guess what? Just like with the car, landing gear is designed to fail like this. The material and structure is designed so that if it failed, it wouldn't just snap. It would crack along a certain path so that during landing, even though there was a crack, the plane could still make it through the runway. 
So a materials engineer could also design how a structure will fail if and when it does. Then based on the failure analysis results, we can design even better landing gear and various other structures. Or maybe if a computer part failed, you're not gonna do circuit analysis like an electrical engineer would, but you may be looking for a soldering issue where there's a connection problem and a component came loose from the circuit board. So again, you'd have to analyze this on a micro scale using a microscope and determine what happened and why. They also have to deal with corrosion, which is a big field for materials engineers, and you can even take elective classes on this in college. Corrosion is destructive to metal, so any pipes that carry some fluid will be subject to corrosion and need to be designed properly. Whether it's pipes that carry water to and from our houses, ones for oil, ones in our cars, and so on. Or various marine technologies like submarines need to be designed not to corrode from all the interaction with salt water. Planes also need to account for this, and there's many more. And different environments these are subject to, like freshwater, saltwater, oil, etc., cause for different types of considerations when designing them. Materials engineers need to take preventive measures to pick the right material to account for all this. You could work on biomaterials, which is something biomedical engineers take classes on as well. But biomaterials are used for constructing artificial organs or to replace bone or tissue. And these materials need to interact well with the human body and not cause harm. For example, there are hydrogels that are needed to repair damaged heart tissues. This incorporates biology and is something you could take an elective class on as well, or you could see in grad school if it interests you. You could work on making superconductors, which are materials that have no resistance to electron flow, like no heat or other form of energy is given off, unlike your electronics, which get hot as you use them. And superconductors can be used for high-speed digital circuits, particle detectors, trains that use magnetic levitation and don't make contact with the ground, and so on. They can also work on materials processing and manufacturing. Materials engineering isn't just about analyzing properties of materials and how to use them, but also better ways to manufacture these materials, like with the fabrication of semiconductors that are used in our electronics. Electrical engineers may do circuit analysis with these, but how those components are made is done by other types of engineers, including materials. Or you could work on the study of carefully rearranging atoms and molecules to form new structures that have better mechanical, electrical, and magnetic properties for a material. This is also known as nanotechnology. The way the atoms are arranged are what gives the materials a lot of their properties. It's why some things break when we drop them and why other things stretch when we pull on them. If we can manipulate the arrangement of atoms, then we can change the object's properties and how it behaves. We can use this to create solar panels that can absorb energy much better, all the way to making glasses that won't break when being dropped, but there are so many more applications. Materials engineers could make clothes that don't smell bad after use, tires that grip the road better, stronger tennis rackets, and the list goes on. But now let's see what you can expect in college and kind of zoom in a little more on these materials. So you're going to cover the four main classes of materials, which are metals, ceramics, polymers or plastics, and composites. And although you learn a lot about everything, there's a big focus on metals. Now when it comes to all these materials, big things we care about that you'll learn are the mechanical properties, electrical properties, thermal properties, as well as the atomic structures. Mechanical properties include hardness, ductility, or an object's ability to deform when being pulled, brittleness, where a material is brittle if you pull on it and it breaks without much deformation. So if you have a material and you pull it, eventually it will break. If it's brittle, it will just snap. Glass would be an example of this. But if the material is ductile, it will actually be elongated and deformed before totally snapping. And certain types of steel would be an example of this. In school, you're gonna learn how to analyze certain graphs which have stress or force over area versus deformation or strain, like how far it's been stretched. Then they'll give you some curve and you have to understand it. This shows that if you pull an object very hard, it only stretches a little. So you know this is a stiff material versus a more flexible one, which might look like this, like for a rubber band. And there'd be more to these curves you'd have to understand, like its fracture point, ultimate strength, what the slope of that initial line means, and so on that can tell you more things like how brittle it is and so on. And every material will have a different stress strain curve. Nothing you have to worry about now, but realize this is something that you'd learn. And there's more mechanical properties, but you get the idea. Then you'll learn electrical properties, like how well materials conduct electricity. 
Thermal properties would, of course, be how well heat can flow throughout an object. You'll learn the atomic structures and bonding within these materials, which is very important because sometimes those structures allow us to determine a material's properties. For example, take graphite versus diamond. Graphite is relatively soft, while diamond is extremely hard, yet both are made out of carbon. This difference in mechanical properties comes from the way the atoms are arranged in these materials. And there's more properties like magnetic properties and optical properties, but this is the general idea. So now, like I said, you go over the four main classes of materials and everything you just saw, you will apply to all of these. But a big one you go over is metal. The main metals you go into include aluminum, steel, stainless steel, titanium, copper, and so on. One important topic dealing with metals you'll learn is heat treating, which I'm going to explain a little so you can see its applications. You're going to learn how to analyze a graph that has temperature versus time. The temperature may go up to something like 800 degrees Celsius and down to, let's say, 100. And let's say this is for something like steel, which would be solid at all of these temperatures, because again, you don't really go into liquids or gases. And the time may go from one second to something like 100,000 seconds or about 28 hours. Then on the graph, you'd be given something like this. Don't even worry about what these are right now. Just realize these are the different transformations the material can go through. Different materials have different looking graphs, just like this red and green curve actually represent two different steels. So let's say we heat up steel to about 800 degrees Celsius and start there. Then we cool it to 100 degrees Celsius in one second, so very quickly. That curve, or line in this case, tells us which transformations this material goes through during cooling. See how it goes through those regions with an M? This goes through different transformations than if we slowly cooled it to the same temperature over the course of about a day. So what does this do? Well, if it's cooled very quickly, like that first line, that might yield a very hard but brittle material. If you cool the material slower, it may yield a slightly softer material, but that is much tougher and doesn't break easily. It's all the same material, but we can achieve different mechanical properties just by cooling it differently. Now moving on, you may do projects or reports on basic objects, but go into depth on the material beyond what you may know. These projects can be for anything, but since we are on the topic of metals, at one school students did a project on an ice cream scooper. Seems simple, but what you may not know is that there's heat conducting fluid within the scooper. This is designed to transfer the heat from your hand to the metal of the scooper, and this warms the metal so that when you scoop the ice cream, it kind of melts the ice cream, making it a little easier for you to scoop, as well as making it so that the ice cream does not stick to the metal. Also, you can't read the words on the box in this image, but on it, it says new aluminum alloy that helps resist corrosion. So hopefully you're seeing how the materials used in nearly everything down to a simple ice cream scooper are optimized by the designers and how corrosion is a huge field as well. Now I wanna to skip to composites. This is something you may take an entire class on in undergrad. Composites are made up of at least two different materials from the other three categories. These are crucial because many technologies of today require materials with certain properties that cannot be met with normal metals, ceramics, and polymers. For example, when it comes to aircrafts, we are trying to find materials that are strong, stiff, and have low densities and more, which is a tough combination of properties to achieve. Often strong materials are also dense as an example. So engineers are trying to design and find the materials that can provide the properties we want to achieve, which is where composites can come in. So you're gonna learn about these mechanical properties, look at stress strain curves of fiber reinforced composites as a random example, methods of manufacturing composites, and so on. Now I'm really not gonna cover ceramics and polymers in any detail, but if you wanna know some basic examples, ceramics might be like a china cup, a brick or a dining glass. And polymers or plastics might include a bicycle helmet, pool balls, dice, and so on. Now these are very basic examples, but in school you cover more advanced materials that have engineering applications, like silicon carbide that can be used to create very hard ceramics, which can be used for car brakes all the way to bulletproof vests. Also note that there are many materials that we've all heard of, but there are way more that you probably haven't heard of. These are just a few out of hundreds that were just in an intro textbook on materials engineering. 
No, you don't have to memorize all of these, but this is a challenge with materials engineering because of the sheer amount of materials out there that all have their different properties. Now, just briefly, when it comes to labs, the equipment you can expect to see would be like microscopes, tensile testers, hardness testers, and things like that. A lab you might do is cool a material very rapidly, then do tensile testing on it. You'll use a machine that pulls the object in opposite directions, which is what tensile stress is, and you'll notice the material is very brittle like we saw earlier. You'll use microscopes to look at the microstructures of various materials, which is very important. Like I said, you'll learn what these mean and how much they can tell you about a material. I said that they can reveal material properties, but they can even reveal how the object was made, like with heat treating and how fast it was cooled. For those wondering how much math you see during college, there is math and calculus, but it's not the majority of the curriculum. For example, in a kinetics class, which you will take, one thing you'll learn is diffusion and how atoms move throughout a material. So you may have a high concentration of, let's say, carbon. So to represent how the concentration changes over time, you would have to use calculus because the rate that that concentration is changing at is not constant. Or remember that stress strain curve? Well, the area under it is the energy absorbed. And for those who have taken calculus, you know this involves an integral. So you see there is calculus and definitely math like algebra and linear algebra that I didn't mention, but it's definitely not as much calc and higher level math as an electrical, mechanical, or aerospace engineer might see. Then as you can see, there's also a lot of chemistry which you will learn within your materials engineering classes. So if you struggle with math, you should expect it in this major and be ready for it, but you should also be able to handle it. Overall, materials engineering covers a wide range of sectors and there are still many challenges that we face and materials engineers are doing research to overcome these challenges. Whether it be to reduce the weight of cars and aircrafts, reduce environmental pollutants in the production and fabrication of various materials, or finding better materials for fuel cells to improve their efficiency. Aerospace, mechanical, and civil engineers are just a few examples of majors that also learn about materials and material properties in their curriculum, but as you can see, materials engineers dive much deeper. And lastly, while there is a distinction that can be made between material science and materials engineering and how we categorize and define them, at least in terms of undergrad, at many schools, it will just be called one or the other, and you will likely be in the College of Engineering if you go into this major. Okay, so you have just watched um, the video uh, via YouTube about the materials engineering. So um, I hope you have, you know, somehow had a glimpse or idea about, you know, um, what material engineer, uh, materials engineering is all about and even the careers that you will be able to, you know, or you can pursue in the future. So now let's go to the introduction to material science and most of the terms here were already seen, uh, you have already encountered in the video that we have just watched. Okay, so now let's um, recall again some of these terms. So we have the material science, and the uh, video kanina um, na present narin uh, what are the other um, subjects or fields na involved diba, in the study of material science. So you can also your knowledge in physics, mathematics, and chemistry um, is really important in studying material science. Or you can use those skills that you have acquired from mathematics, science in studying material science. <clears throat> so it involves determining the relationship between the structures and properties of materials. So this is material science. Okay, a material scientist tries to determine the relationship of material properties to the response of the material. So na ko din naman sa mga responses niyo sa video response na pinasa at about uh, um, your understanding of the material science and uh, kung gano'n siya ka-importante sa, um, sa inyong uh, pag-aaral lalo na kayo ay mga electronics engineering students. Okay? So nabanggit dito, di ba, yung relationship between the structures and properties of materials. So for example, what is the relationship between the pressure and temperature of a material? So 
isa yan sa mga concerns na I mean, sa pinatag-aralan nyo sa material science. Okay? Um, materials engineering is a study um, on the process of creating or designing a new material based and based on the existing material with similar properties. So some of you ha um, has, um, have already um, mentioned this in your video responses, di ba? Yung you're able to design a new material based on the existing material. So I have heard siguro mga a number of students mention this in their video responses. Okay, so tama, yun ay materials engineering. So you study on the process or processes of creating or designing a new material. So materials engineer, ano yung ginagawa niya? So you create a new material with the desired properties based on that existing material with similar properties. So, yan yung magiging isa sa mga responsibilities or task ng isang materials engineer. Okay. So, for example, a car window glasses previously breaks into splinters causing severe injury. So, just imagine this. Yan, to make the glass safer, the glass is tempered by increasing its internal stress such that when broken, will crumble into granular chunks. Diba? Um, Na-experience nyo ba to? Or nakita, diba nakita nyo naman sa mga, even sa mga movies or sa napapanood ninyo, diba? Kapag ka, um, kapag ka mabasag or mabreak yung glass, diba? Hindi siya katulad nung, diba? For safety purposes, diba? Hindi siya, parang yung idea niya is parang may mga ano ka doon, uh, splinter siya, diba? Na kayang makap, maka uh, kayang ma-accidente yung i mean ma ano yung katawan mo di ba na ma-injure ka so instead yung improvement na ginawa is that kapag nabasag siya or uh, yeah nag-break it will turn into what it will crumble into granular chunks di ba yung parang naging porous siya okay so dahil yun sa mismong um uh, dinevelop nila ng material, di ba? In-improve nila. So, dinesign nila yung material na yun na. Mag-break siya or mag... Ganun yung magiging um, appearance niya kapag na-break. Na okay, so yun yung actually yung mga ginagawa ng mga materials engineers. How they can be able to improve and for safety purposes, isa yun sa mga um, ano nila, isa sa mga objectives nila of you know, improving um, the design of that material. Okay? Di ba? Amazing lang. So, kayo din. Di ba? So, kung ganito yung nangyayari tapos hindi pala siya safe um, sa mga existing na, I mean, sa ganitong situation natin. So, you try to think of a better way na para mas ma-improve siya at maiwasan yung mga accidents. Di ba? Okay. So, yun sa mga kinoconsider natin. Okay. Now, we have microscopic structure and ma macroscopic st structure. Okay, um, microscopic, okay, from the root word micro, diba? So, defined as a material structure that can be seen with microscopes, okay? So, by your naked, uh, by your, kapag ka tinignan mo lang ng mata mo, diba? Hindi mo makita kung ano yung mismong structure niya ng material. Pero kapag gawamit ka ng microscope, so, through the aid of the microscope, you can be able to see some of, you know, yung maliliit, diba, na the particles okay so macroscopic structure is defined as the structures that can be seen by an aided eye so tulad nito din mga kahit yung maliliit na dust nakita mo diba without kunyari um okay naman yung vision mo wala kang mga eyeglasses pero yun yung ma mga macroscopic kitang kita mo yung mga dumi diba ganun okay yung kunyari may dumi dun sa mismong material na yun kita mo with your an aided eye Okay, so yun yung difference ng microscopic tsaka macroscopic. So I know that most of you are familiar with these terms. Now let's go to, okay, structure of a material. The structure of a material usually relates to the arrangement of its internal components. So pag sinabing structure, yung kanyang internal components. Okay, um, as an example nito is, um, materials are composed of atoms that may have specific atomic configuration. Okay, siguro um, ito ay na-encounter sa electronics na rin, di ba? Yung in-explain yung atomic structure even sa chem or physics. 
di ba? Yung bawat material, yung mga materials na ginagamit natin for electronics, like yung mga insulators, yung semiconductors, and conductors. Di ba? So, dito, um, we'll be able to see, di ba, yung, di ba, kasi bawat material may, ano yan eh, di ba, may atoms in yung unique or distinct yan. So, yung silicon, crystal, di ba? Nakita mo yung, I mean, pagka um, inaral mo yung mismong ano niya, construction niya. So, nakita mo, di ba, yung nangyayari kapag ka may external force ang in-apply dun sa crystal na yun, di ba? So, um, kapag ka, um, walang external force, ano yung appearance niya? Ano, ano yung nangyayari? So, with the some of the parameters that will affect the the structure of the material like kanya may may mataas na temperature na inapply dun sa mismong ano material so what will happen to that certain device or material okay um so may nangyayari um somehow diba yung idea ng diba construction ng material ng mat, construction ng material is um will be able to parang visualize, ah, okay, kaya pala nag-deform yung ganitong material because of the high temperature that has been applied to it, or kaya pala hindi na siya gumagana dahil sa may certain part doon, so yung mismong internal na, I mean, components or properties na, di ba, naapektuhan. Okay? So yung atoms, alam nyo may atoms, di ba, hindi naman natin nakikita yun, di ba? Yan. So, amazing lang yung pinapag-aralan natin, di ba? Hindi natin nakikita. Di ba? Yung kuryente, hindi natin nakikita. Yung flow of electrons. Right? Di ba? Nasabi natin, paano nagkakaroon ng, pa, paano, paano nagkakaroon ng, paano naging, nagkakandak yung ganitong klaseng device? Paano nagkakaroon ng flow of electrons? Ano yung nangyayari? Okay? Na-amaze ba kayo dun sa idea na yun? Di ba? Hindi natin nakikita. Pero, yeah, because of the science, the wonders of science. Yeah, we're able to, you know, realize na, ah, okay. So, little by little, diba, we were able to have, you know, a good understanding of some of the parameters that uh, we use in engineering. Okay? Properties of a material. So, these are grouped into six. My mechanical properties, electrical, thermal, optical, magnetic, and deteriorative and property. So um, this is defined as the characteristic of material that differentiate it from other materials. Okay? So sa mga specification, di ba? Yung itong material na to, ano yung kanyang mechanical properties, ano yung electrical properties nito, so yun yung nagdi-differentiate dun sa mismong material. Okay? Optical characteristics niya, okay, magnetic and deteriorative. Questions here? None? Walang tanong? Follow nyo naman? Okay. Yan. Katulad ng kanina sa video, di ba? Although na kung nakikinig kayo dun sa mismong explanation niya. So, very clear naman. Mechanical properties relate to deformation to an applied load or force. Okay. Nakapagbigay siya ng mga examples dun, di ba? Yung mga terms na na-encounter natin. Yung ductility, ano pa ba? Uh, brit uh, brittleness. Ayan. Electrical properties such as electricity, conduct electrical conductivity, and dielectric constant. Ayan. The stimulus is an electric field. Thermal naman, and can be represented in terms of heat capacity and thermal conductivity. Okay, yung magnetic properties naman, uh, it demonstrates uh, the response of a material um, to a magnetic field or application of magnetic field. Optical properties, um, the stimulus is electromagnetic or the, from the root word, na opto means light, diba? so light radiation, so optical properties. For deteriorative characteristics, um, this relates to the chemical reactivity of materials. So, yun yung anim na yun, na, na types ng, or properties of material. Mechanical, electrical, thermal, optical, magnetic, and deteriorative. 
okay, properties. Okay, so these are the four components of uh, materials. Okay, the structure of a material depends on how it is made or processed. Well, the performance of the material depends on its properties. Okay, so the four components are um, are interrelated with the, these uh, yeah, processing, pag-process ng material, yung structure niya, yung properties and performance ng material. So, ayan. Katulad itong example na to, yung uh, graphite and diamond, and diamond are made up of carbon atoms. Okay? They are processed differently to produce a different material. Ayan. Pareho sa lang made, of, made from carbon atoms. Diba? Pero, um, yung quality nila, di ba? may mga properties sila na distinct, di ba? although they come from the same carbon atom. Okay? So, iba yung process na ginamit di ba? para ma-produce yung ganitong klaseng material. Okay? Thermal properties. Ano pa ba? Optical. <clears throat> okay? So... Why study materials? So very clear naman, uh, and, and I know that uh, we were able to uh, to share um, yung mga importance or yung importance why, why we should study um, material science or materials engineering. Okay? Isa yan sa mga nabanggitin yung kanina is uh, uh, it is necessary to study materials to enable to select the necessary material for a specific purpose. Ayan. Isa yan sa mga reasons, di ba, why we should study materials. And, uh, yeah, usually there is a trade-off between one characteristic to another. Okay, for example, yeah, a, duct a ductile material have limited strength and vice versa. So, Anong ginagawa ng engineer? So, ang ginagawa niya is, di ba, not only to know the right specifications, but also the limitation induced by the increased performance of the material. Okay? And uh, this is also one important reason, yung deteriora deterioration of material property. Okay? For example, if you have a beach house, okay? Tapos, since diba, alam niyo, mga beach house malapit sa dagat, di ba? So, as in, di ba? You need to determine if the roof of the house is highly resistant to corrosive attack. Okay? So, you have to make sure na, kasi nga, di ba, yung kinakalawang, di ba, yung mga metals, di ba, kapag ka, siya. So, you have to make sure na yung mga material na gagamitin mo are resistant, di ba, to some of the attacks, yung corrosive attacks in that case. Okay? And note is salt, uh, salt is corrosive that can shorten the lifetime of your roof. So, pwede maggamit uh, ka ng material as your roof, uh, para, para sa maging roof mo, na resistant siya dun sa uh, corrosion. Okay? And then you need to have basic knowledge about economic considerations. So, nabanggit nyo rin to kanina, di ba? Kung yung material ba na kagamitin mo is, di ba, um, uh, um ka save ba tayo in terms of yung cost niya kasi di ba makakapagkait ka ng material pero yung yung gastos mo naman para magawa yung mismo buo yung material na yun syempre parang matagal mo pa ma-realize na okay kailan to yung return of investment ko di ba kapag kait ako ng device na ganito pero sobra-sobra naman yung gastos mo so you have to consider din yung ano yung economic i mean state niya. Okay? So, kung ito ba ay kayang ma-achieve ba natin yung, so, kunyari, in two years time, ma mabawi mo yung gastos mo. So, ayan. For example, yan. Ito, solar panels are very effective in replacing electrical sources. So, tama nga naman, di ba? So, but they are very expensive. So, usually, I don't know kung updated to kung if in 15 years. So, may mga studies na rin naman na they were able to um, manufacture uh, um, mga murang mga solar panels. But, yeah. Return of investment will usually be around 15 years. So, imagine. Yeah. Magandang source, other source siya ng electrical, I mean, electricity, pero napaka-mahal niya. 
Another example here, um, buying expensive leather shoes might be cheaper in the long run. So, leather shoes, kapag binili mo siya, umpisa pa lang, di ba? Napakamahal niya, di ba? Ayan. Pero, since mahal siya, pero tumatagal talaga yung mga leather shoes. Years, kumbaga. Yung iba nga, 10 years na, di ba? Buhay pa yung leather shoes na yun. Okay. So, kaya sabi dito, might be cheaper in the long run. So, compared dun sa mga nabibili, nabibili natin synthetic, di ba, na leather shoes. Okay? Or mga man-made leather, di ba, na shoe, shoes. So, kunyari, wala pa isang taon si Rana, di ba? So, bibili, bibili ka na ulit ng panibago. So, in 10 years, nakailang sapatos ka. Tapos yung leather shoes, for example, 4,000 na bili mo. Tapos yung synthetic, parang 1,500. So, yung 4,000 na yon na leather shoes, nagamit mo siya in, for 10 years, di ba? Na, basta nagamit mo siya. 10 years. Tapos, every year, for 10 years, mahibili ka ng sapatos na ano, na synthetic, di ba? So, nakailan ka? 10,000 mahigit, 10,000 pesos ang gastos mo. So, ayun. Parang ganun yung, ano, yung parang naging impact niya so, sa mga decision making natin. Anyway, kung what to buy. So, ano ba yung maging effect nito pag binili ko tong ganito kamahal pero matibay naman. So, ito mura pero hindi siya ganun ka maganda yung quality niya. Okay, so yun yung mga parang kinoconsider natin dito sa material science, di ba? Yung mga mat yung gagamitin natin, di ba? Kapag nag-design tayo, um, ano yung mga dapat i-consider natin. Okay? Question so far? Wala? Andiyan pa ba kayo? <laughs> and the more familiar you are with the various characteristics and structure property relationships, Ayan, as well as the processing techniques of materials. And the more proficient. And nabanggit nito kanina doon sa ano ninyo. <laughs> sa, ito sa mga sagot ninyo. And confident you will be to make judicious material choices okay, based on you know, these criteria. Okay, so we have uh, the classification of materials, yung metals. Yung basic classification is metals, polymers, and ceramics. The advanced materials include composites, semiconductors, and biomaterials. Okay. So let's have, you know, very short na ano lang, idea of these basic classification of materials. So let's start with metals. Metals, um, for example, yan, yung mga elements natin. But usually pag metal, di ba, mga single elements, di ba, like copper, iron, aluminum, and zinc. Okay, ito yan. We have also metal alloys. Yeah, includes small amounts of non-metallic materials. Pag alloy kasi, di ba, ano siya? Hindi siya pure na, I mean, alloy nga, di ba? So, may metal ka, tapos meron siyang non-metallic materials. Like, anong hinahalo mo doon? Carbon. Yung mga ano ninyo, yung mga bracelet, mga necklaces, di ba? Mga alloy na yun. Okay, kunyari, di ba? Ah, silver tong ano ko. Okay, pero yung silver na hindi talaga siya pure silver. Kaya may percentage lang kunyari itong ganito. Pero may halo ng ibang element yun. Okay? So, yan. Oxygen, nitrogen. In terms of density, metals are denser than ceramics and polymers. Di ba yung nabanggit natin yung basic, uh, um, yung basic classification ng materials? Di ba? Metal, ceramics, and polymers. So, pinaka-dense dun is yung metal. Okay? Totoo naman, di ba? Based on your experience. <laughs> okay? So, let's uh, look at this um, bar chart of room temperature density values for various metals, ceramics, and polymers, and composite materials. Okay? So, as you can see, um, this part right here is the density in gram per cubic centimeter. So, ayan. Mas mataas nga yung density nitong mga metals. Ito compared to ceramics and polymers. Di ba? Pag nilagay mo yan sa, ano, sa isang uh, uh, medium, kanyari, kanyari, liquid or fluid, di ba? So, yung mga metals, magsisink yung kaagad. Kasi ma, yung density niya mas mataas, di ba? Kumpara dun sa ceramics and polymers. Okay? Um... Okay, so itong composites na encounter na rin naman natin ito kanina sa video, but let's go over later. Ito naman, uh, itong bar chart natin shows the uh, stiffness. Okay, stiffness or the elastic 
um, elastic or Young's modulus. Okay? In gigapascal. Okay? Ito naman nakalogarithmic scale na. So as you can see, di ba, you have metals, ceramics, and polymers being pinakamababa yung kanyang uh, stiffness value. Okay? So this shows lang na, di ba, yung characteristics or properties ng material, di ba, nagkakaiba because of this, their unique feature din. Okay? We have here also the strength in megapascal. Uh, tensile strength and yung units niya is megapascal but nakalogarithmic scale na rin yung graph natin. So, as you can see, di ba, yung polymers is nasa, ano siya, below 100 na scale. And metals, ayan, so mas matibay, di ba? Tensile strength niyan. And we also have here the bar chart of room temperature resistance to fracture. Okay? Or resistance to fracture or the toughness. And sa seat work niyo mamaya, so we'll encounter siguro itong mga terms na to. Okay? Kayang-kaya niyo namang sagutan yung ating seat work. Okay? So familiar naman kayo sa mga material na to, di ba? Metals, ano yung example ng mga ceramics, polymers, and composites. Okay? Ito nabanggit dito, yung ceramics like um, which include itong uh, compound na to. Ayan, glass, concrete, and polymers. We have nylon, polyesterine, mga plastics, di ba? Ganun. Composites, wood. Okay. This is the bar chart of uh, room temperature electrical conductivity ranges of the materials. Okay, na metal, ceramics, polymers, and semiconductors. So, shows here uh, the unit of electrical conductivity is in uh, ohm meter. Okay, logarithmic scale. Siyempre, metals, di ba? Good conductors, right? <laughs> Siyempre, ito naman. Kaya, itong ceramics and polymers, they are actually ano, non-conductive materials, di ba? Or ginagamit as insulators. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Mag-react naman kayo dyan. <laughs> Baka mali yung sinasabi ko. Sir, mali yes, po yung sinasabi nyo. Yung ceramic ay kayang mag-conduct ng electricity. Tama ba? <laughs> Ellis? Okay. So, yung semiconductors naman in between the, of course, the metals and uh, yan. Or we might ask about good conductors, diba? So, polymer ceramics na sa ano siya, na sa insulator siya na ang category. Okay, so we we're done with metals. Now we um, have a brief, uh, you know, uh, check of ceramics. Ceramics are compounds between metallic and non-metallic elements. So they are most frequently oxides, they are most frequently oxides, nitrides, and carbides. For examples are porcelain, yeah, glass, tiles, alumina, and silica. So these are examples of ceramics. Okay, they are stiff, strong, and hard. However, they are brittle, okay, and easily to fracture. Okay, insulators and more resistant to heat. Yeah, so ceramics, ba sabi ko insulators sila. So yeah. More resistant to heat and harsh environment compared with metals and polymers. So yun lang yung isa sa mga ano niya, more resistant siya sa heat, yung ceramics. <clears throat> and we have, you know, the third classification is uh, the polymer. Polymers include the familiar, yung plastics, yung rubber, yung mga materials. So... May mga examples tayo dito, yung polyethylene, nylon, PVC or polyvinyl chloride, yung styrofoam or polyesterine, yun yung term natin. Yung common name kasi is styrofoam, di ba? Rubber. Okay, so these are examples of polymers. Polymers um, have low densities. Okay? Kung i-ano mo yan sa... Ano, i Tatapon mo yan sa dagat, di ba? Sila yung nag-float. <laughs> sa mga nag-float. Kasi nga, di ba? Low density. 
Ayan, not stiff nor as strong as ceramics and ayan, di sila stiff nor as strong as ceramics and metals. Ayan, they are ductile or ductile and pliable, inert and unreactive to most harsh environment. Ayan, isa sa mga drawbacks nito is ayan, low melting temperature. Okay? So, mas madali siyang mag melt. Right? Okay. Knowledge application. So, what are the pros and cons in the container of most carbonated drinks? Okay, so there are three kinds of containers used in most carbonated drinks. We have the glass bottles, ayan, plastic bottles, and aluminum cans. So, may ceramics, polymer, and metal. Okay. Sige. Yan, discussion. Anyone? Okay, so siguro ipapa-essay ko na lang to sa prelim exam. <laughs> okay, so ito na yung ating um, sagot dun. Or for knowledge application, so glass bottles have the following advantages. Okay, can able to store the carbon dioxide in the beverage for longer times. Kaya nga diba, sabi ni Cesare kanina, diba nire-reuse yung mga glass bottle ng, ng mga soft drinks. Yan, di ba? Kasi nga, um, yung storage nun, di ba? Pwede siyang tumagal ng napaka, uh, I mean, uh, ng mas matagal kumpara dun sa ibang material na gamitin mo para uh, i-store or ilagay yung mga yung carbonated na drinks. And cheaper than aluminum cans. Disadvantage naman is it can easily break, uh, it can easily breaks and heavier than the other containers. So, isa yun sa mga cons. Diba? Mas mabigat siya. Diba? Imagine mo, diba? punta ka ng, uh, niya, bibili ka ng, pinabili ka ng uh, kagroup mo, diba? okay, uh, isang case ng soft drinks. Tapos, syempre, bote yun, diba? so, mag-isa ka lang. So, kung ganun, isang case na tas, ano pa, glass yung material or yung container niya. So, mabigat siya. Diba? Hindi mo kayang mag-isa na ikaw lang yung dada. Pero kung mga ano siya, um, naka-aluminum cans yung dala mo. So, for 24 people, so kaya mo naman, hindi ka mahihirapan, okay, compared dun sa bote, di ba, yung container. Okay? Now, for aluminum cans, di ba, aluminum cans naman are, yung pros niya is lighter and it quickly cools, di ba, kapag nilagay mo sa ref, di ba, mas nabilis siyang uh, lumamig, di ba, it can easily be recycled and can paint the the surface. Yan. However, it is more expensive. Okay. Yung plastic containers naman are relatively cheaper than aluminum cans but can only store the carbon dioxide at shorter times. Yan. So tama na bang necessary may expiration yung mga ganong plastic bo bottles. Okay? Any more questions? So please um, try to remember this um, knowledge application kung gano'n ka-importante, di ba, na maintindihan natin yung um, materials na ginagamit natin, di ba? So, and we have um, the last one is composites. Okay? Composite is composed of two or more individual materials which come from either metals, ceramics, and polymers. Okay, may mga examples tayo dito. Yung fiberglass is actually a composite. Okay, or glass fiber reinforced polymer or GFRP. Naradig nyo na to, yung GFRP? Hindi pa po, sir. Okay, so ayan. Pag naradig nyo yung GFRP, yan, fiberglass yun. Okay? Composed of glass fibers in epoxy or polyester. And we have CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced polymer. So, better than fiberglass but more expensive yung carbon fiber or CFRP. Okay, so that's all. And, uh, ayan, so tamang-tama lang din. It's 3 p.m., magti-3 p.m. na. So we're able to finish the material, itong PowerPoint presentation natin, just in time. Because we also watch a video dun sa YouTube um, giving us an overview of materials engineering. 
So any questions? Wala na sir. Okay, wala nang tanong. So I'll stop the recording.